Curious Vedant and welcome to my podcast. Today my guest is Vishnu Vallabh, the founder of Blinking Dots, a branding agency based out of Hyderabad, India. He also likes to call himself the starter dot of the agency. Hi Vishnu, welcome to my show. Hi Vedant. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me to your show. Really happy to be here. So Vishnu, I am curious to know about your agency's name. Why is it called Blinking Dots? And why are you called the Starter Dot? The idea behind the name of Blinking Dots is uh, really weird and funny. So for a long time, I wanted to write uh, movie reviews. When we started off the agency, I was very, very uh, stuck in kind of coming up with a name for the agency. When I wanted to write the review blog, I named it Blinking Dot. Then I realized that the same name could be very well used for my agency. Did your company design the logo of your company or did someone design it for you? No, no, no. We did. We did ourselves. So once we had the name of Blinking Dots, it is but natural that you have to use dots in the logo. Uh, But then we decided to build a concept around the dots. Since we had to put the dots, we thought, okay, why not build a nice, uh, cool story around it? And uh, that's how we did our own logo. Wow, interesting story behind your logo and company name. What type of agency is Blinking Dots. I can proudly say that we are a brand design agency. I think our our main focus and our uh, value that we have always added to clients is in terms of helping them to design their businesses or their communication in a much better way. So that's the value we add. So we'd like to say that we are a brand design agency. Designing logos for big companies, it must be very hard, is it? Some part of it is hard. So to get what the client wants and to think beyond his expectations and deliver beyond his expectations is the tough part. The the designing part as such is the coolest thing you can ever do. I mean, that is the most enjoyable part of the job where you get a white sheet. Basically, you sit on a blank piece of paper. And from there, you build a beautiful 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 architecture for the uh, client so that is the fun part of it but as you said the understanding part and uh, figuring out what kind of a logo will be correct for their uh, situation is the toughest part i always thought that designing a logo was just drawing your logo on a paper on a piece of paper and taking a picture of it and making it neater in the computer. But now I learned that it's way more than that. Uh, In fact, I'll tell you a small story. So uh, at Blinking Dots, uh, we also have this uh, concept of even naming brands. Okay. So let me tell you a small story. We had a client who, who wanted to start a service apartment business. You know what are service apartments? Yes. We stayed in a service apartment. Exactly. So he wanted to start a service apartment business and then he heard about us and he came to us saying that I wanted to start a service apartment business in Hyderabad. Please help me with the name. So we went about, we sat in our agency and we all had a a huge discussion about what kind of names can we give this client and everything. So one one of our uh, team members said that we understood what is the number one uh, feature that people want from a service apartment. So we understood that one one of the main features is privacy. So once the privacy element came in, we started looking at metaphors. So we looked at a small, uh, very, very interesting uh, element called a bubble. Okay. Now when you sit inside a bubble, you feel very private and very secluded and very uh, secure, right? Mm-hmm. So what we thought was, Now, when you enter that service apartment, that is the kind of feeling that you want to get when you enter, when enter into such a place. So we said, what is the kind of sound that you get inside a bubble? When, you know, when you're inside the bubble, there is a nice sound that comes. It's called blub, blub, blub. 
okay so based on that idea we took the name and gave the name called blob once that name came through the client absolutely loved it so a logo generally flows from the concept of that business that we have interesting a very interesting process how do you understand what the client wants and how do you know what kind of a logo design will suit their needs i'll take a cue from your own name you know what is the name of your podcast curious vedant okay fantastic so what does curious mean there that i'm always asking questions exactly so you know you're also looking at me who is asking you a lot of questions so the clients also we ask the client a lot of questions so we are also supposed to be curious like you okay so when the client comes into our agency he comes into our agency knowing that you know this is what we do day in and day out now when the client comes in and he says i want a very very minimal logo or if i this is what is my business now let's say if you are starting a restaurant okay, okay. Uh, one of my clients started a restaurant here okay his restaurant was on the top floor of the building okay and he said us please suggest a name for the restaurant that is when we came up with the name of up it's a very simple name it's called up the rooftop lounge okay so when we had to come up with a name like up uh the client ultimately understood that it's a very very simple and uh, uh easily catchy name so when the name is very simple okay that is when you realize that the logo has to be very uh, dashing and modern okay when the name is uh, a little longer and a little tougher to catch for the customer that is when you understand that the client the customer wants to know the name first that is when you put the logo on a simplistic term for the customer so ultimately this entire business revolves around exciting the customer thank you for your explanation so what is the logo of uh, the apple company that you use an apple right but what is so different about the apple from the other apple that it's white color okay. and it has a bite exactly so see the point you already realized that this apple is different from the other apples just by that one small factor of a bite right yes the reason why they put a bite into the apple was because first the apple was a whole apple and people thought it was a cherry exactly so how do you how do you make it look like an apple by putting a bite into it exactly exactly Thank you for creating the logo for Curious Vedan. No, oh, it was such a beautiful logo, and you were so cute in the middle of it. We love creating it for you any day. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Some logos have a picture and the name of the company. Example: Bira. Some have only a picture. Example: Apple. Mm-hmm. Some have only the name written differently. like coca cola right. what is it like that and how do you decide which way it should be so most of these decisions are taken after talking with the client so uh, ultimately what we are doing as an agency is only giving the client the best version of his company now let's say have you seen red bull yes i have okay uh, have you seen amazon Of course, I've even drawn their logo. Right. Uh, have you looked at the logo there? Yes, it has an arrow with a. Uh, it's supposed to be from products from A to Z and the smile. Exactly. So that the entire mission of Amazon is captured in that one swish from A to Z. Yes. It is. Right. Have uh, you looked at the Nike logo? Oh yes, it has a tick. Right. Why is there a tick there? Mm, I don't know. Nike says, "Just do it." Uh huh. So no matter what, wherever you are, and whatever situation you may be in, Nike says that you have to just do it. So 
the doing part of it is the swish you try to tick off some boxes right once you have done your homework or once you have done uh, playing with your friends or you have read a beautiful book you tick saying i am done right yeah you you do exactly the tick is for that let's say have you looked at pizza hut yes it has a hut a hut in a circle right uh, or have you looked at burger king yes it has a burger or dunkin donuts a uh, don it has d and d right so a lot of companies you know when they want when they're selling a product or a food item like that they most tend to have a a uh, reference to the product in their name okay if i'm selling a restaurant let's say if i'm putting up a restaurant which has more than one products with me then i will i will try to minimize the uh, food food items on the logo right but yeah. if i am if i am looking at a uh, a company like have you looked at human society international yes i have right so uh, what is there on that logo there's a circle with animals a lot of animals no the moment you put in a lot of animals and then you know put all of them in a circle now there is meaning to that whole logo now it's a society for animals yeah we understand whom we are being humane to now right icon adds a meaning to the logo when the the name of the company itself does not lend an anything a complete explanation right so when you see a company like coca cola let's say okay coca cola the name is so famous right now that they don't need to put any icon for themselves now if you have you ever been to mcdonald mcdonald's yes so what is the most defining term of defining visual element of mcdonald's it has a big yellow m exactly so they are called the golden arches wherever you go in the world the moment you see that m okay you know that a mcdonalds is nearby right yeah. yeah right so sometimes that one icon is enough to give a visual cue that okay there is a mcdonalds nearby you design the logo how do you make it popular so people recognize the logo see the logo as such is the starting point of the communication of the company okay so once you design the logo you are basically giving an identity to the company so when i say that we you make the pop uh, logo popular you know we make the logo popular through giving it a very very unique color palette we give it a very very unique font so by giving people visual cues to say that okay okay if this is the color that it's got to be facebook if it is a little blue with a bird on it it is got to be twitter okay if it is pink it is got to be instagram so that is how uh, a color is used to differentiate or make your company popular in the market so the logo is the first part and then there are a lot of other components after the logo that take the logo into the market you know make the logo popular by putting the logo on your cups by putting the logo on your t-shirts by putting the logo on your merchandise a lot of things you can make the logo famous so that people will start recognizing it recalling it and then purchasing based on the logo that you have designed which is your favorite logo and your favorite font and why my favorite logo i think there are two or three that stand out for me a lot i i kind of like the taco bell logo a lot i like the nike logo a lot i think there is a lot of meaning to that logo i, I really like the nike logo a lot and my favorite font you asked right yeah my favorite font is a font called gotham do you know that font um, yeah but i haven't used it and it's a very very uh, beautiful font very geometric font uh, so i like that uh, uh, i like that font a lot i tend to use it in almost all of my uh, video works also a lot my favorite font is eras itc the microsoft font oh you like eras itc yes that's a very nice font that's a very nice font it's a good choice how do you use all these fonts on what platform you use them um powerpoint Oh, you use PowerPoint already? Yes. 
Wow, nice way to go. That's way to go. Very nice. Very nice. What are your hobbies? So I do a lot of uh, reading, video editing, playing table tennis and recently I've picked up cooking. What is your favorite food? I love everything vegetarian. I love a lot of food but uh, I'd say buttermilk rice with rajma curry uh, has to be my go-to food here. What made you choose to be a branding consultant? As a child, what did you want to be? My choice to be a brand consultant uh, actually stemmed from the kind of person I am. So most of my time, uh, most of my childhood, I was always into uh, the creative side of things where we used to be participating in SUPW uh, classes, you know, uh, being on the sports field, you know, composing songs. Okay, uh, doing a lot of uh, drama performances, a lot of creative stuff we used to do as children. Okay, so that kind of stuck with me right from childhood. But as uh, I was also, uh, I also happened to be good in the academic front. So there was a streak of both creative side to me and also the academic side to me. So once I finished my uh, degree and went on to uh, study business administration in the college, I understood that the only way I could do justice to both my creative side as well as the academic side is by choosing the advertising profession because you can do be both creative and you're also serving businesses. I, and as a child, I, I always loved movies a lot. I loved the uh, larger than life uh, uh, persona of movies. So in one way, advertising is also a stepping stone to uh, you know, do a lot of uh, video related work. So I always liked that as a child and the branding consultant thing is a normal extension to my personality. So that's how I chose it. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Thank you. Thank you, Vedant. I, I don't know if I've spoken this much to anyone on my business till now. And you've really been uh, such a great host. Really thanks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Vedant. Thank you. Dear listeners, follow my Facebook page, Curious Vedant, to get updates on the upcoming episodes, to listen at leisure on your phone and get notified by future episodes, subscribe by searching for Curious Vedant wherever you get your podcasts, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and many more. You can also listen to my show on CuriousVedan.com. Thank you for listening to Curious Vedan. And don't forget to rate and leave comments.